we offer the same promise to our employees that we offer to our members, the same brand promise, which is to transform the trajectory of their career. And so when a person joins LinkedIn, one of the first things we'll ask is what is it they ultimately want to accomplish? And what may be a bit of a departure uh, from historical norms is that if somebody says their ultimate dream job is not going to be at LinkedIn, that's not held against them, that's not a bad thing, and we're not doing everything we can to disavow them of that idea and to get them to stay. What we're going to say is, okay, if that's your dream job three, five, seven years out, how can we make sure that you're on the right path to make that happen? How can we set you up to be successful? What skills are you going to need? What path should you be on? And along the way, you may change your mind. And we, we have found that that ultimately is creating a lot more value for the employee, a lot more value for LinkedIn, because it turns out that they do want to stay longer mm. when they know that we have their best interests. In what percentage of the people you ask that question to have no idea? I've never been asked that question, and it's exactly the right question to ask. So first of all, that's the, that's the first interview question I ask when I sit down. And it's less interviewing. My team will typically ask me to help close somebody or make sure that they understand why LinkedIn's a great opportunity. And the very first thing I say is, what's your dream job? Right. And there's no, obviously, there's no right or wrong answer, and I have no expectations. What I'm looking for is clarity. And the longer someone's been in the workforce, the more clarity I'm looking for. If you're someone just graduating school and you're looking for your first job, I'm not expecting you know what it is you ultimately want to do. Right. And if you do, that's a huge bonus. I'm paying very close attention. But as you continue to progress throughout your career, I'm looking for as much specificity as possible because with greater specificity is a greater likelihood to make it happen. And I'm always struck by the fact that, to answer your question, there's an incredibly low percentage of people, even later no. on in their career, who can answer that question off the top what of the head. What would you say? And when, uh, uh, 40% no? I need to do it by cohort. 20%. So for students graduating, yeah. it's probably, I'm thinking about all the times I've asked audiences of interns and things like that, it's probably 20-ish percent that would know. But then when you say, would you mind sharing, they'll say, I want to change the world. Right. Right. Uh, that's not good enough. That's not good enough for Jeff not, Wiener no, no, changing no. the there's world. No, there's no judgment. Let it be known. There's no judgment. <laughs> right, right, right. It's not, it's not that it's not good enough. It's that it's not good enough for the individual to be able to manifest that because it's not specific enough. Changing the world, I get, and that's very good, and it's better than not changing the world or hurting the world, right? <laughs> but what, what I, I love to hear is when somebody says, I want to change the world by virtue of introducing a healthcare solution that's not only going to reduce costs but make information more transparent. It's like, you okay. know what? If you've got the skills, if you've got the passion, I am highly confident you're going to make that happen right. in some and way. For a mid-career professional, what is the percentage? It's probably it's still lower than you'd anticipate. It's still under 50%. My guess is 30 to 40%. Huh. There are even there are executives I talk to who've been doing this 10 or 15 years right. who say, hmm. And what happens, it's not unusual. And I think what happens is when people graduate, they haven't necessarily answered that question. And they get a, a job offer. Uh, they get a, a gig and they take that job offer and then they get promoted or they get headhunted by another company or their friends mention they're working at a hot new company and they jump to that next job and that next job and they get paid more money and they wake up 10 years later, 12 years later and they're not happy although they're supposedly quote unquote successful. And the reason they're not happy is because it's not necessarily aligned with what it is that they ultimately want to be doing. Right. So.